There are some good reasons to say that alien life may exist. It may be a question of the statistical probability. However, we must point out that some people believe in aliens on bad evidence. There are many mysteries and things that seem to be evidential that people latch on to. And there are many people out there trying to make money off these mysterious topics. The obvious result is that you have a series of ideas out there that people call evidential for a belief in aliens, say, coming to Earth. But they're not actually evidential at all. Very often, selected information taken out of context and a person cobbling together these ideas. There's a lot of talk of crashed UFOs. The claim that UFOs have crashed and we have the evidence for it. Perhaps the most famous one is, of course, the so-called Roswell incident, which happened outside of Roswell in New Mexico. With the Roswell incident, we don't actually have evidence for the actual crash itself. We have almost no witnesses, a great many claims, and we cannot say that the actual crash, if it took place, was a crash of an interstellar craft. There's no actual evidence of that at all. There are claims of fragments of people seeing debris scattered across a field, and yet they cannot confirm that there was indeed aliens. There are many people who claim that they have parts of this debris from alien craft, super metals, metals that repair themselves, and other such claims. Yet almost none of them have ever been tested. The nearest thing to a test on alien material of this kind is basically where you have people with pieces of debris made from common earth metals which show no evidence of actually being from another world. That is to say that many people are deceived. The authors deceive themselves of the believers who might get their hands on some kind of material, might well believe it to be more than it actually is. Yet when it comes down to the test, it's shown to be simply a matter of simple earth material. The so-called Roswell video, and there are several other videos which seem to show an alien being dissected or shown in some way, supposedly old Air Force footage, or perhaps army footage in other cases, American, or in some cases with other crashes in other parts of the world, different nationalities. The best evidence, or what people call evidence, is in fact fabrication, where people have taken a room, made it look like a fairly plain room, almost militaristic. They have a few items in there which fit the era, and they dissect a rubber dummy, making it appear to be almost organic, lowering the quality, and of course with these videos, with these fabrications, you don't have the originals. The Roswell video, which came out in the 1990s, has been thoroughly debunked, and the people who made it have come out and said that they fabricated it, and yet people latched on to the idea of it because they thought that it was genuine. They wanted to believe, and indeed some people today even claim that it is still genuine. The vast majority of evidence on the internet, such as on YouTube, is basically dodgy pictures and unclear video. A claim of an alien craft, perhaps. A claim of an actual alien. And yet the video is of such poor quality that you cannot discern what's actually being shown. People make videos that appear to be more than they are, and with modern techniques, such as using Photoshop, you can make something appear to be very realistic. People believe it, people who wish to believe it, they latch onto the idea, and so they believe in something which is not truly evidence. There are many people who are trying to get donations for their work, so they have this so-called evidence, or they might simply talk about the so-called evidential video of others and try and make money that way. It's a good way of getting attention, and therefore a good way of making money for certain types of people. A great many people claim to have been abducted. They claim to have been taken from their bedroom at night and abducted by aliens, even though there's no physiological evidence. There are rational explanations which explain how people can witness these things that aren't really going on. It may be possible that some people are having genuine experiences. However, without actual evidence, we can't actually say it's genuine. 
and none of these people actually show anything more than a potential hallucination. Ancient Aliens was a TV series that was quite popular for a year or two. It was basically put together by various authors who write about the idea of ancient astronauts coming to Earth and influencing early human culture, perhaps even creating it, giving them technology, perhaps even uh, the existence of nuclear weapons in ancient India and other such potty ideas. Typically what you get with people who have claims about ancient astronauts that the archaeological evidence supports the idea that a super advanced civilization or civilizations had a massive impact on human society, that there are things which cannot be explained, such as highly complex metals and other materials which could not be manufactured by early man, nor by a natural means, therefore they pose the idea that there was aliens. Also selecting images from ancient sites which look a little bit like some kind of alien life form, they try and make out that there was indeed alien life which came to Earth and influenced early civilizations. The main problem is that they're being highly selective with their data and in fact simply making up facts, claiming that something is made of a particular material even though it's actually made of a very common material, such as claiming that stone blocks are made of, say for example, granite, when in actual fact they're made from sandstone. Equally claiming that certain types of metals being used were highly advanced alloys, when in actual fact they were fairly basic copper or other metals which were being used. Making claims about the impossibility of certain structures being constructed by early man, they exaggerate their point to make their beliefs seem to be true, and typically try and sell their books, their lectures, and appear on pseudo-scientific documentaries. There's a large number of spiritual gurus who claim that they have knowledge of alien life. These gurus vary in style depending on their belief and their background. Certain New Agers who say that they're abductees or they're contactees, that they speak on behalf of various alien civilizations. These people are dismissed by the vast majority of youthologists. Even so, they're taken seriously by thousands of people in the West. A great many people take seriously the claims of the Galactic Federation of Light, people who talk about the Palladians and the Reptilians, and so-called experts on alien infiltration, such as David Icke and his claims about reptilians. People very often link these ideas to the ancient astronaut theory and try and make out that they've been here for a long time, influencing us for better or worse, and there are different divisions of aliens which are trying to impact human civilization. Naturally, these mystical claims do not actually confirm themselves. They're not things that are actually evident, but they are things which are believed by a great many people. They're not supported by the facts, but people believe them regardless. People make claims about the science of the aliens, the ideas of the aliens, and yet they never bring forward anything which is more substantial than the ideas that an average person could simply make up in a kind of science fiction, science fantasy view of what aliens might be. Many people claim that there would be evidence of aliens, but there's been a massive cover-up that literally billions of US dollars or English pounds or whatever the case may be has been pumped into covering up the alien truth, including destroying ancient monuments, covering over ancient pyramids, covering up the fact of ancient sites on Mars and on the moon, deceiving us over the fact that the moon is in fact a space station. <laughs> And in the more rational and mundane kind of view, the idea of the men in black, who basically go around covering up the facts of alien interventions. Although in all cases, we don't really find a serious cover-up, and there's no evidence of what they're actually covering up. And a lot of people claim to be stalked, to be gang-stalked, stalked by the FBI, CIA, MI5, MI6, and there's no actual evidence that they've actually been stalked at all. They happen to be walking down the street. A person walking on the other side of the street is walking at the same sort of pace. They think they're being stalked. When you look at a lot of these claims, we're not talking about a cover-up, any kind of conspiracy. Very often we're talking about paranoia. We're talking about people who seem to believe that certain things are going on. 
but a lot of it's down to their own paranoid pattern seeking. I would say the biggest problem with a great amount of alien claimants, those who claim to have contact or claim to have evidence in any way, shape or form, is the science. Their science is very often selected, it's very often biased, very often they don't know what they're reading. That kind of belief is deceptive because they don't truly understand what they're actually reading, what they're studying. They don't actually confirm what they're believing, but they're calling it evidential. Very often through simple selection where they place factual information within their belief and next to their own ideas. They make it seem to be more realistic, even though they don't actually confirm what they believe. They merely suggest it through their information selection. To the ill-informed, that might well seem to be something that makes the idea seem to be a valid theory, even though it isn't. You may have heard of the Drake Equation. The idea of the Drake Equation to a great many people is that it confirms the existence of alien life. By having the probability that alien life exists, they believe that they confirm that alien life must exist. The Drake Equation itself takes a series of made-up numbers, simply runs through those numbers and comes up with the idea that there must be an abundance of intelligent alien life in the galaxy. I think the main problem is that it's oversimplified. You have people making the claim that this confirms alien life altogether, when in actuality it confirms nothing. You do not say that you know something to be the case because it is merely a probability, even if it is a reasonable probability. With a few slight variations in the equation itself, you change the results massively. The Drake equation itself simply takes a series of parameters and comes up with the idea that alien life must be abundant. It's understandable that it may well be extremely far out. Without solid information to confirm that there are indeed aliens in our galaxy and across the universe, it's simply a question of belief. It may be valid, it might not be. The WOW incident with SETI was an incident where a person who was checking over the print-offs with the SETI Institute came across a bit of code which seemed to be something quite intelligent rather than the standard random bits of code that came through normally. He circled it and wrote next to it WOW and so it became known as the WOW incident. This incident cannot be fully written off as being a possible alien contact although there are other explanations. The best we can say is that we cannot write off the possibility that the incident itself was indeed something to do with alien civilization. The other possibilities vary and we're talking about various possibilities of interstellar radio sources of a natural origin. And there have been other very interesting radio signals that have been picked up by SETI and indeed by other organizations. However, until we actually know what these things are, we cannot say that we know them to be evidential of alien intelligence. The various points I've listed today have been expressing the lack of knowledge that we have. This is why modern science rejects the ideas of ufologists and alien abductees.